We are back now with our series Coronavirus and the Classroom. For a lot of people, that classroom is at home. We've got important advice to make sure that your kids are getting the best education possible this unusual school year. That's right. Whether your child is back in the classroom, staying at home, or doing a combination of both, which a lot of kids are, NBC's investigative and consumer correspondent Vicki Wynn has some great advice for you to help them excel and stay safe. Vicki, good morning. Great to see you. Hi, good morning. Great to see you all, too. So, Vicki, let's walk through this if we can right now. For a lot of kids, they're taking on blended learning, right? They spend some of the days in class and the other the days they do it at home. So what are some of the best practices here as you send your kids back to school? We're in that same boat, Peter. We're going to be doing two days in school, three days at home. The key here is consistency and structure. Keep the schedule the same from in class to at home, waking up at the same time, lunch and snack at the same time, and the school day at the same time. And remember, you are not there to be the teacher, even though you may be working from home or at home with your child. You're there to provide support. So don't hesitate to ask for a weekly or a monthly check-in to see how your child is progressing. The other thing is, think back to last spring. What worked for your child? What didn't? Are they more of an independent learner? Or maybe you need to set a timer to help them move along between different subjects. We were getting the hourly check-in this week as my five-year-old looked over his <laughs> shoulder and said, Mom, Dad. You need that, right? Well, and for kids who are doing at-home learning, Vicki, what is the ideal setup? What do you need to do? This is key. You want to designate a space for school. It doesn't have to be a big space, but make sure that it's quiet, that it's away from distractions like the Xbox or the Nintendo Switch. I really think it's important that you uh, consider some headphones, especially if you're going to be working at home. Stock it with the same school supplies that you would at, at school. And also have your kids help you design that space so it's warm and inviting and welcoming. It'll be a place that they want to go to to learn from. Schools have had several months to kind of prepare for this fall. The spring was not great for a lot of families. How else can we sort of tackle the virtual learning this fall? Well, first, don't break the bank. Shop your school supply closet. See what you have left over. Chances are you're buying some extra electronics this year to keep up with all the virtual learning. Consider buying used electronics, but check for the warranty and the return policy first. The other thing is talk to your school. Be the squeaky wheel. Make sure your child has the resources that they need. And don't forget your local phone or cable company. The reality is 12 million kids in this country don't have access to broadband connection, according to Common Sense Media. So there is a real digital divide. You are going to want to reach out to find out what resources, what discount packages are available. Don't forget your school district as well as your local libraries. And just to follow up on that issue of school supplies, Vicki, what are some of the things that kids might need this year that they might not have needed last year? Kristen, this is the number one newcomer to the school supply list that we never mm. thought we'd have to add, but it's masks, masks, mm. masks. My middle schooler's supply list just came out. They want her to bring at least two clean masks every day, her own bottle of hand sanitizer and a box of tissue paper. You're going to want to label everything. <laughs> yeah, there she is. Yep, she's ready to go. So, but so this so is cute. not the year. <laughs> Thank you. This is not the year for shared school supplies. Mostly everything is going to be individual and students will have to label everything, their water bottle, their pencils. We're really trying to limit the interaction between kids to keep them safe at school. But don't forget those things. And you know, a lot of people are asking me, should I send my kids back to school in person? And I have to say there is no wrong choice. Do your homework, see mm -hmm. what your school is doing to protect the students, and then ultimately make the decision that's most safe, most comfortable for you and your family. Vicki Wynn, we thank you very much. Good luck to your family as we get started. The challenge, right, as parents, thank you spend you. all day trying to keep your kids off the screen. Right. And now you're telling them to focus on the screen. It's a tough duty. It is a tough duty indeed. And uh, I know you guys have your work cut out for you at home.